It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. And know that the Lord himself is God. And it's he that made us, not we ourselves. And we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And we're to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. And give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. You know, the word thanksgiving, look it up in the Hebrew and, and in the Greek, is a verb, not a noun, it's a verb. Keegan, can you tell me what a verb is? A noun is a place and person or thing, and a verb is action. Action. Thanksgiving is an action, it's a verb. So what are the things we should be doing? Well, there's seven verbs in, in that scripture I just read I want to talk about. Shouting, serving, coming, knowing, entering, giving, and blessing. Thanksgiving's about doing. And number one, Thanksgiving's about excitement. Come before the Lord with joy. And shout unto the Lord. When was the last time you shouted unto the Lord? You know, we do that at sporting events. There, there's joy when one of our brothers or sisters in our family succeed. They marched around Jericho once every day. And on the seventh day, they went around seven times. What did they do when they got done the seventh time, Dave? They shouted. They shouted? When uh, Gideon went to fight against the Midianites, they took a picture with a fire in it, and they had a trumpet, and they blew the horn, and they did what? They shouted, the sword of the Lord in Gideon. Can you remember when the last time was that you shouted in church? I don't know why it is we think we have to be quiet and reverent, and this is the time to be reverent and holy, but... How about if we just practice once? Let's all kind of shout it at the same time here, glory to God. Would you do that? Ready? One, two, three. Glory, glory to God! <coughs> Let's do it a little better. <laughs> One, two, three. <coughs> glory, glory to God! God! All right. We ought to practice that a little more once in a while. Get in the habit, you know. I've been to some black churches. Boy, they aren't afraid to speak up. Amen. Hallelujah. Preaching, brother. Glory to God. God made us to be emotional people. We get happy. We get excited. And I think it's appropriate. It's fine for us to rejoice in God's presence. You know, in the Old Testament, they used to dance before the Lord and sing and shout and well, I think when we get to heaven, there's going to be some dancing, there's going to be some singing and shouting. Maybe we ought to practice here. But boy, I, I'm looking forward to heaven when God puts an anointing on these feet and I start to dance before the Lord. And we're going to sing and shout and give glory to God. Thanksgiving's about excitement. Number two, Thanksgiving's about serving, serving. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. You know, that's a principle in Scripture. We're going to serve the Lord with gladness. Here's an, uh, kind of a, an all-inclusive Scripture, Deuteronomy. This goes all the way back to Israel coming out of Egypt, Deuteronomy 10. What does the Lord require? And I think a lot of times people ask that question, well, what does God want from me? Well, here it is. Fear the Lord. Walk in his commandments. Love the Lord and his people. And then serve the Lord. See, because if you do the first part, that leads us to serve the Lord with all your soul. See, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. So our minds are being renewed. You serve God by renewing your mind, changing your thinking. 
uh, you serve the Lord by surrendering your will, not my will, thine be done. And you serve the Lord with your emotions, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith, self-control. Serve the Lord with your soul. And then it comes down and we're going to see, we're to serve God with our bodies and present God our bodies as a living sacrifice. So we serve God by doing physical things. Number one, we serve the Lord by worshiping from a heart. You can only worship in the spirit because God is the spirit. Then we serve God by the renewing of our minds and surrender of our will and emotions to him. And then we serve him by offering our hands, our voice, our bodies to the Lord. We serve the Lord by doing. You don't get saved by doing, but we serve the Lord by doing. Because you said, if you love me, you will do. See, doing doesn't get us into right relationship. But if you're in right relationship, you will do. So it's about doing. Jesus said you cannot serve God and wealth at the same time. You can't serve God and sports at the same time. You can't serve God and power and authority. Serve God with all your heart, all your heart. Not just 51%, not just 99%. Serve the Lord with your whole heart. And then the last line is really important. Serve the Lord with gladness. I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. I did a lesson years ago entitled this, Choosing to be Happy. Like Dave said, you know, his, you can choose to have the pity party. and You can choose to stay there. We've all been in the ditch. We've all been at the pity party. Don't stay there. Sorry, I gotta leave. <laughs> Get out of there. Just choose to serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, number three, Thanksgiving's about coming. Come before him, come to him. But we have to do the coming. The prodigal son had to leave the ditch, the pig pen, and start coming back home. Walking is a choice. Right now, I choose to stand right here where I am. And when I get done, I'll choose to walk and, and leave and go to the foyer. Walking's a choice. So you can choose where you want to go. Choose things that lead you closer to the Lord. Because it's up to us to come. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Come, you, come, make the choice, come to me. And I will give you rest for your souls. See, Keegan, are you coming to Christmas party this year? Because when you come to the party, I guarantee you there will be gifts given to you. See, and if that's true in the natural, how much more important is it when you come into the Lord's presence and he's going to give gifts, but you have to come to his presence to receive them. Somehow find a way, make a plan to come into this place of fellowship with the Lord every day. And that means putting stuff away, whether it's in your room, in your car, um, what you're watching on TV or the computer, kneeling and praying somewhere, find a way, a place to come into his presence. And we don't do that physically like we walk to come and go, but you do that in your spirit where you come into his presence by leaving the worries, the pressures behind. Like Dave said, I had to make a choice to get out of the poor me pity party and move into fellowship with the Lord with his stack of scriptures. I bet you're reading them every day now, aren't you, Dave? And that's what produces faith. Uh, 
praying and talking to the Lord, Jude has this great scripture, building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. See, build up yourselves. But it's about coming. See, because when you come, good things happen in his presence. When you come to his party, there's, there's a lot of gift giving going on. And it's on his behalf. Like the song said this morning, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. But what he gives is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, meekness, temperance, giving us eternal life, forgiveness of sin. The Bible says every good thing, James chapter 1, every good thing comes down from the Father. Amen. So I, I remember a song, and the principle is a good one I sang when I was a kid. I'm under the spout where the glory comes out, where there's no guilt or shame. I will always remain where there's plenty of rain under the spout where the glory comes out. And, and that's a decision because there's a place where the blessings of God come. There's a place where the glory of God is in his presence. And if you stay there, make it a habit of going there, then the rain keeps falling. Here's one of my dad's favorite songs. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, there's joy, there's joy in my heart. For Jesus made everything right. Amen. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy tonight. You know, the manna came down from heaven. It just fell on the ground. It was everywhere. So as long as you were in that place, you could feast on it. Come. Number four, Thanksgiving is about knowing, knowing, learning, gaining knowledge. Know that the Lord himself is God. There's no other. The Lord himself is God above all others who claim to be God. If know that, know that. He that would come to God must believe that he exists, that he's there, that he is God. And that he gives good gifts. Amen. You, you got to know that. You got to know that. Never doubt that. You know, because what Satan says, and we all have said it probably, so, Lord, why did you do this to me? God doesn't come to bring disease. He doesn't cause car accidents. He doesn't put cancer on people. He doesn't bring despair and discouragement into our lives. Didn't come from him. He is God. He's the one that made us. He's the one that wants to bless us. Because we are his. He made us. We're his. We belong to him. It's he that made us. Because God knew us even from the womb. He knew you. He planned you. He had a plan and purpose. His ultimate goal is to get you through this life to live and reign with him forever in heaven. He knew you before you were born. We are the people, the sheep of his pasture. The analogy there is sheep have a shepherd. It's his pasture. He's the shepherd, and he leads us into green pasture. God leads you to places in your life where you can... I mean, why would a shepherd lead sheep into the desert where there's nothing but sand? That's not a good shepherd. A good shepherd looks ahead, things, the grass getting pretty minimal here. Uh, we need to find a new place. And so the shepherd looks ahead, oh, this is good, and leads the sheep into a green, luscious pasture where there's more to eat. Now that's the job of Jesus, the great shepherd. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to lead us. Amen. And that's the work of pastors and teachers and leaders in the church. Amen. Lead people from where they are, hungry and wanting more, lead them to a place where they can grow and be nourished. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. 
everything we have came from him. People are more talented in one area than others. I have some talents, others don't. You have talents that I don't. That's why we're a team together. And none of us have reason to be proud because we have nothing that we receive ourselves. So we come to the Lord humbly, humbling ourselves before him. Nobody has a reason for pride when they come before the Lord. That was Lucifer's big problem. I'll rise up, I'll be like God. We have no reason for pride. The Pharisee, God, I thank you like I'm not. God, I thank you I'm not like John Case. I thank you that, you know, you've given me better. Jesus said that man got nothing from God but contempt. The sinner went out in the corner and he bowed down and said, Father, have mercy on me. And the thief on the cross, have mercy on me. This man's done nothing wrong, but we're guilty of Amen. what we got. We're guilty. Come before him, knowing that he's God, knowing that we're a sheep of his pasture, knowing that we depend totally on him. Number five, thanksgiving is about enter. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Entering is an act. We're, we're the one doing the moving and we're moving. How, how do I get into his presence? You know, we talked about that before. Here's the how. Enter into his presence, his courts with praise, praise. Now, worship is a product of the heart and your spirit. Your spirit's born again. In fact, that's how we have entrance into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom. So if you're born again, you enter into the kingdom. But then how do you move up the center to where his throne is? Okay, we're in the kingdom by the new birth. But the way to get close to God, the way to move to God, is praise. Now, we're born again in the spirit, and they that worship God have to worship him in spirit. John 4. But praise is from the soul. Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to see Elizabeth, and she said this, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Remember what that is? Your mind, your will, your emotions. So if your soul's going to praise and make, number one, you make a choice to do it. For example, Joe, can you choose to be quiet for the next 30 seconds? Or Joe, would you choose to say amen? It's a choice. You choose to be quiet. You choose to speak. You can choose to mope. You can choose to sing, choose to be sad, choose to rejoice. So you enter in as a choice and you do that. You move closer to God with, with, with your mouth. The way you praise God is with your mouth, with your mouth. Thanksgiving gives us entrance into the praise of God. Do that every day. Um, that's a choice that we make. Number six, Thanksgiving is about sacrifice. You know, we have a song we sing here. We bring a sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord. See, that's how you get into his presence. In the Old Testament, they had to bring a sacrifice. Come to the altar, make a sacrifice. Then, and only then, could they enter into the temple. We bring a sacrifice of praise. Not lambs, not goats, not money. Your money is a sacrifice as well, but what God really wants is you to give that sacrifice of praise. The reason it's a sacrifice is you don't always feel like it. Learn to sing and praise God when you don't feel like it. It's easy to rejoice and thank God when something really wonderful and great's happening. It's harder when, when the bad stuff comes in. At that moment, you have to choose to make a sacrifice. I'm going to praise. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I will sing unto the Lord. I will. It's an act of the will. So when you come with praise, it's a sacrifice because it's a choice that you make to not do something else but do this. 
And so it's pleasing to the Lord. That's why I say, I'm sure he was listening to songs, the hymns this morning. Wow, look at those people. I was impressed with it. So how much more is our Heavenly Father impressed with your singing, with your praise? And then the other thing I mentioned here about sacrifice is this. Paul said this, I urge you to present your bodies, your bodies. See, we're born again in the Spirit. Our souls are being renewed to serve God. But he wants all three. And he says, I want you to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice unto the Lord, which is acceptable to God. And it's your spiritual act of worship. I've read this scripture, I've used it, but I was amazed when I read it this week and emphasized that last phrase. Presenting your body, doing things with your hands and with your mouth, and or not doing things, is a spiritual act of worship in your body. So we're to serve God with our hearts. We're to serve God with our soul and here with our body because now your bodies are the temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. You know, we have somebody that comes in and cleans up this auditorium every week. When was the last time you did a sweep of your heart and your mind and your thoughts and you just kind of swept out some stuff? You know, if we clean up stuff in the natural, we wash our hands, the lens is always after me. Did you wash your hands? Uh, shouldn't we kind of wash up some things going on in our mind? That stinking thinking you were talking about, Dave, the Lord prompted you, Dave, clean that up. We're to present our bodies as well as our souls and our hearts to the Lord. See, giving of anything to the Lord is an act of worship and sacrifice to the Lord. Number seven. Thanksgiving's not about so much about us being blessed. We're thanking God for what he's done for us. But Thanksgiving is about being a blessing back to him. The word bless means to bow down, to honor, bless the name of Jesus, honor the name. It grieves my heart to, use, to hear people use God's name in vain. God damn this thing, Jesus Christ. And what they're doing, breaking a commandment, it says thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain, which means in vain means to use it in the wrong way. And that's what they're doing. God doesn't damn people. Who, why would you want somebody to go to hell? You can tell it's the language of the devil. And so one of the number one things when he cleans our mouth, we bless and honor God, we humble ourselves before him by choosing to honor his name as a precious holy thing. Here's the key, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will choose to do it. His praise will continually be where? In my mouth. See, I, a surprise when I read that, not in your heart. I mean, that's where it starts. Not even in your mind, and it has to be there as well, because that's the next step. Amen. From our heart, it comes to our mind. But the final step, the way to actually... Put it in reality is when it comes out of your mouth. Amen. Start talking. You know, I, I found myself, I, I didn't, as I prepared for this, I noticed I walk around the house just praising the Lord, talking to the Lord, little bits, not continuously. His praise will always be in my mouth. We, we can't serve the Lord nonstop. We got jobs, we got things going on in our lives, we got distractions and all of the things. But do not let a day go by. In fact, I, I think it's even better. Don't let an hour go by that you don't talk to the Lord. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, I'm believing for Dwayne. Lord, I'm believing. And praying little bits. I, I think somehow we think we've got to be on our knees for an hour at minimum because that's what Jesus did in Gethsemane. And that's an awesome thing. But boy, it's hard to keep your mind, your concentration for one hour on spiritual things. If you ever tried it, you know what I mean. But we can do little snippets, and I think that's what pleases God, and I, I think that's what keeps us in his presence. 
I was reminded of a song from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in with, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Sing it with me if you know it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is 